everyone so welcome to my bachelorette review finally um i just wanted to let you guys know if you're new here or if you're a new subscriber because people who have been following me for a minute already know about this but i am a finally finally a working actress in los angeles i moved out here a few years ago to pursue my acting career and it's been a struggle it has not been easy lots of times i wanted to give up and quit but i persevered right and because of that and because of just not quitting and not giving up and you know just going after it things are starting to happen for me doors are starting to open up and opportunities are coming up that i just never had before so um i don't have a nine to five like finally this year i'm able to work as a full-time working actor but with that means that i just don't um my hours are never set so I was supposed to be on vacation for the last two weeks and within that vacation time, jobs came up. Like this last week, I booked two shows. So I had to work those shows. So on the day that I was supposed to be reviewing Bachelorette, I was on the show and I didn't wrap it until midnight. Having said all of that, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm not ignoring you or um, I, I didn't give up on the show or anything like that. I've just been working. That's the honest to God truth. I've just been working. And um, that's why sometimes when you see reviews from me, you get like eight reviews. That's so just because I've had the time to do it. And I just wanted to catch up. And that's probably what's going to happen now because I have like three days off. So I'm going to spend that time reviewing and catching up with you guys and putting out some new content. So thank you very much for your patience. Thank you all for checking in. I am here. I am alive. I'm still a fan of the show and I, um, I'm going to give you a great review. That's another thing. I could just put it up at any time when I get a chance, but I like to give you guys quality. I think that's why you're tuning in. Um, I like to watch quality here on YouTube. So I just don't want to give you anything. So that's another reason. Like if I can't give it my all, then I'm not going to do it. And there have been days when I have um, had minimal time and I didn't want to rush it and I didn't want to do it tired. So now that I have my energy, I am here to do this uh, review for you. Oh, and while I have you guys here, my episode for Adam Ruins Everything um, premiered last week but you can find it on their website um, and you can also just check uh, for reruns of it because a lot of them are playing. And if you see the, if you watch this week's episode on Tuesday, my episode plays before that and I'm in the episode, Adam Ruins a Baby. Um, Adam Ruins having, uh, not Ruins a Baby, dear God. Adam Ruins having a baby. I'm in the um, first half an hour of that episode. So please check your girl out, support, tweet, whatever you need to do. But uh, that's what I do out here. So that's one of the things that I'm doing and I've been so busy I haven't been able to tell you guys about it that. It will play before this week's episode, which is this Tuesday at 10 p.m. Uh, that's the new episode of Adam Ruins Everything, but my episode from last week will play before that at about 9 p.m. Uh, so um, if you want to see it then, you can watch it then, but if you um, if you have some time, dear God, natural hair girl, if you have some time, check it out on their website, Adam Ruins Having a Baby. I am in that episode um, and I'm starting to live the dream thank you Jesus anyway I've talked an awful lot about me <laughs> why not anyway let's get into this review guys um I think Rachel's gonna pick Brian I really really do and I'm nervous about that because I just don't think he's good for her but the way this show is starting to go I feel like our girl is gonna pick Brian <sighs> Let's talk about it. First of all, why are we still in Europe? I'm like, why did they pick Europe? Did Rachel say that she wanted to travel to Europe? Like, they're in the most random places. No, no Tino Shea, Geneva. I just don't know why they're here. I mean, when you think about, like, love, I guess you think about, like, Rome, Paris. Like, I mean, hell, even South Africa. But Geneva of all places. And it doesn't seem like Geneva is sitting well with the temperatures of black people on this show because... Every scene that Rachel and Eric are in, their teeth are chattering, they're freezing. I'm like, why are we in Geneva? No tea, no shade. I would love to travel to Geneva if they ever have a summer. That's the only time I'll be there because apparently that cold weather is not for the African-American skin because Rachel is going through it in them Geneva street. Also, who would have thought that this would have been the final six? Like nobody saw this coming. I know I didn't see it. I mean, we have Peter. <laughs> Dean, uh, Eric, I was about to say, who is the other black guy? <laughs> Peter, Dean, Eric, 
and two dudes from production. Real talk, because who in the hell are Adam and the Penguin? I don't even know the Penguin's real name. Like, why are they even there? We know absolutely nothing about them. And I kind of feel like Rachel did have time with Adam and the Penguin, but because you know, production maybe wanted to spend time focusing on Yosemite Sam and Kenny. We just did not get these intimate times that Rachel had with Adam and the Penguin, which would be the only reason why they're still here. I feel like she did have downtime with them, but we just didn't see it because, you know, the Bachelorette wanted to turn everything into a race war for this season. I, I don't understand that either, but it's just, it's just odd that this is the final six. Like, I, I, I definitely would have guessed Eric because Rachel has been feeling Eric for a very long time and none of us wanted to acknowledge it, but she's been feeling that dude. Peter, we all saw that coming. Dean, we all saw that coming. Brian, we all saw that coming. But those other two, who, who in the hell are they? At this point, they could be extras. You know what I mean? They could be PAs, okay? Who are they? Guys, oh gosh, it, it's gonna happen. Just prepare yourselves. Brian is going to win this competition. Here's why. Rachel has the opportunity to get to know Penguin and Matt, okay? Or Adam, what is, oh wait, wait, the Penguin's name is Matt and Adam is, see, I don't even know who they are. I'm mixing up their names. I, I don't even know what's going on here at this point. Anyway, she has an opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one date. I'm thinking, oh, well, okay, she's going to pick the dudes that nobody knows. No, who does she pick? Brian. I'm telling you, a dude with freaking cheek fillers is about to win this competition. Swag is a killer, ladies. It is a killer. It destroys us every time. Coochie will slay a man, but swag will destroy the wisest and strongest woman of them all. That is in the Bible, Ephesians 97 and 8 or something. I'm telling you, it's there. Read up on it. It's in there. She put Brian in a Bentley? A Bentley? Oh my gosh, he, he's winning. He's winning. She put Brian in a Bentley. I have never seen a date like this on this competition. Like she normally takes the guys to get fries from like Chick-fil-A or something, but all of a sudden she gets to Geneva and she wants to put Brian, put Brian in a Bentley and get him a bright lingo or whatever that expensive sound and watch is. I think he hit. I'm telling you, I think something more happened between Rachel and Brian, and maybe this is it. Ma Rachel, give us the tea. Maybe her and Brian had a little, you know, genital rendezvous sex. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Maybe they, they did it or something. Maybe that's what happened, and I'm guessing she... I'm guessing he put it down. I'm guessing the sex was just amazing because I, I just don't understand. I don't see it. I don't get it. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But she put him in a Bentley and that's letting me know something. Like, ain't no way you're putting a dude in a Bentley and, get, and getting him a diamond encrusted watch and all y'all did was kiss and grind. Oh no, honey, that penis has visited your vaginal orifices. Something has happened. There is more to this story. Somebody, what, you know what? You guys are great investigators. Y'all get types of tea that I haven't even heard heard on the streets yet but y'all be putting it in the comment section please let me know what happened with Rachel and Brian there's something more there they this kissing and there's more they done something more because this date that she put him on is phenomenal Brian I like black Rachel <laughs> do you girl you are too thirsty for this dude that looks like a damn mannequin like what the hell he got a big dick that's what it is. After this date with Brian, Rachel need to give Peter a house and at least give Dean a damn scooter and Eric a plane ticket home, okay? Because honey, you can't just do no regular dates after you done did all this for Brian. Oh, and their kisses are so wet and sloppy. Uh, just get married. I'm so sick of them at this point. I think I'm just upset because I feel like he's gonna win. And I'm just so upset. I hate it. I hate when they kiss. I hate when they embrace because Brian is manhandling Peter's wife. That's Peter's wife. But I think Rachel just... Ugh. You can't be in a relationship with a dude that you don't want to like bang. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, sexual attraction or just physical attraction is a really huge part of a relationship. Like if you don't want to like, you know, become one literally with that person, it's not really going to work. And I just feel like Brian is the dude in the house that she just, oh gosh, she wants to become one with. I think she likes Peter, but ah. Uh, the energy that she gives to Brian is just intense. Like even watching it now, they're literally like sucking each other's tongue on national TV. Get a room. 
I'm, I'm so upset. <laughs> so Rachel gets another one-on-one -on -one date and who is it with? Dean. Like, what the hell? Rachel, we don't know who these other two dudes are. Like, I'm telling you, at this point, Adam and Matt, the penguin, could just be background at this point. That's that's what the that's the role that they have been playing this entire time. Because I don't even know what they sound like. Like, what is going on? You know what? Y'all wanted me to review this episode just to stress me out. And I'm so upset because I'm officially on vacation now and I'm back to being stressed. Back to Rachel and Brian for just a second. And seeing them together and just like watching just their little scenes together, I kind of realized what's happening with Rachel and I could be wrong, but I think this is what's happening. And I think this is why a lot of women dread, you know, their thirties, because I feel like it's the, um, hurry up and get something or like hurry up and settle section of a woman's life that society forces upon us. Like you should have all of these things. Men get it too, but I feel I'm just speaking of women in this, um, in this era, in this stage of the conversation. I feel like it's, we're, we're forced marriage and kids and we're forced to like have everything together or be going into the 30s already pregnant and with the ring and all of those you know all of those weird crazy scenarios that just don't make sense anymore especially since the baby boomers screwed us and we have no more money uh thanks baby boomers millennials are broke um anyway why did i go there Ugh. I'm sorry, I just checked my bank account, so that's probably what's happening. <laughs> anyway, I feel like that's what's happening with her, and that is probably why she's settling for Brian. I feel, I really feel like it's settling, because I just don't feel like Rachel in her 20s, like, I don't think that, you know, 25-year-old Rachel would really be considering, you know, marrying a dude with a Botox forehead and cheek fillers who's serving Maleficent realness. Like, can we be real? Brian looks like Maleficent. And I don't think that Rachel would be interested in the dude like that had she been, you know, had it been 10 years ago or not even 10, six or five years ago. I don't think she would even be looking his way but because she's in the 30s. It's just like, you know, I got to get a husband and this dude is really into me. So, you know, maybe I can just, you know, overlook, you know, his Maleficent skull, you know, or overlook the fact that he, you know, is grimy. And I think that's what's happening here. She's settling. And I also think she's settling for a guy that's really into her because she doesn't want to get with the dude who won't propose and I think that's the end game of the show that you do want somebody that you do want to at least have an engagement and I don't think the other guys are ready to do that and I think that Brian will play the game and probably get that on that knee and for the sake of the show she's probably going to focus on this dude and not really on the other guys who really who are really here for her in my opinion but it, it, that has to be it because I'm just none of us are really understanding it. and I'm not that there's nothing wrong with Brian I'm not gonna you know bash the dude but I just don't think that he's the right fit for her and it, it confuses me when I see their chemistry it's so confusing but you know what having said that we all have just been attracted to a dude that people in our lives just did not understand because it was this one dude that I used to work with and nobody in my life could understand the attraction. But I was like into him, into him. And I came across his Facebook because <laughs> I was stalking it just to see, like this is the thing, right? I just check up on guys that I used to date every now and again because I just want to make sure that their lives aren't better without me you know what I mean so I just want to check in just to see you know that his life is horrible because we're not together it is <laughs> checkmate anyway uh I look back at it now and I'm just like what was going on with me but you know I used to really be like uber religious and I was in the church and you know I, I was turning 24 and everybody was like getting married and having kids and that was like the mindset of where I was at that I have to like at least go into my 30s with four children because that is the mindset of you know the church that I was in at that moment that women are supposed to just have kids and be a good help meet for the husband and nothing else and I didn't know that I could have a future outside of what this really religious church thought that I should um be so maybe that's what's going on and i didn't mean to get all deep and in my business but i did and that's why you're here so now we're on to the second part of rachel and brian's date and on this part we find out that brian got a crazy mama because rachel now we're getting into the hometowns so rachel's trying to talk to him trying to see what's going on and you know she's always asking and i get it i understand um, that this is a question that people who are in interracial relationships ask, especially if you're in a black and white uh, interracial relationship in America, you got to ask these questions because listen, 
you know, <laughs> our people are sworn enemies. It is what it is. We are like the freaking Starks and Lannisters. That's what it is. We don't get along because of our history. So when you are, um, we are from those different cultures, especially cultures who have beef, you try, you have to ask this question, but I hate it. It's so cringeworthy because I'm just like, and, and maybe she's doing it for TV, but I'm like, I, would you get this far in a relationship at this point with somebody and have to ask if he could bring you home to his parents? Like that should be something that comes up way earlier before you like got your legs wrapped around him and you're grinding genitalia, in my opinion. But she she asked like all the white dudes, can you bring me home to your parents? And I'm like, hell yeah, shoot. Uh, anyway, so uh, she's trying to like talk to him about it. And then, you know, Brian reveals that his mother is cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. So it's going to be some drama next week because Brian eventually gets the rules for the hometown. Who didn't see that coming? But anyway, um, I'm interested to see how his mom is going to react because it's either Brian has a crazy mom or Brian just wants to keep Rachel out of his personal life because the wheels will start to turn and things will start to crack and the, I guess the facade that he was painting for her probably wasn't what she what it really is I don't know but I'm I feel like he just dropped everything on his mom being nuts way too soon like his mom being like not nuts nuts but like overbearing and like really um he brought some girl home and she didn't like his mom and I'm just like what did your mom do because let me tell you something right a girl will overlook a crazy mother-in-law if the guy is worth it and rachel seems to really be into the guy really be into brian and brian is talking about how he was really him and his woman that he was with it was really going to be something special and then she met his mom and dumped him and i'm like how wacky was your mother because there are a lot of women with majority can we just be real <laughs> like a majority of women with mother-in-laws that they can do without but they deal with it because they really want to be with that dude so i'm like brian either the girl didn't want to be with you or your mother is just that unbearable so i i don't know what it is because i don't really trust brian so i don't know what's the truth but if brian got a crazy mama we're gonna find out next week because homeboy got the hometown and if his mom is crazy, Rachel, just get out of there because, you know, I, you can love a dude as much as you want to. But if, if he got a crazy mama, just back off because you can end up with the Queen Cersei as a mother-in-law. And you'll need that kind of drama because Cersei, Queen Mother Cersei, is oh, nuts. And then they get physical again. I am so sick of Rachel and Brian being physical. It's And this is why I think she's in this situation. Because I feel like they get so physical and they don't even know anything about each other. I guarantee you Rachel doesn't know his middle name. I guarantee you she doesn't know like the full extent of his profession. Because they spend the majority of their time just kissing and grinding. And, and that's the thing. Like when you have, I forget what it's called. Is it, is it, is it like... Is it oxytocin? Something is released, right? When you become physical with someone and these things are released and you get, your mind gets clouded. And I think oxytocin or something like that is released and it makes you feel good or joyful. It's, it's, I think it's the same emotion that happens when you eat food or do anything that you enjoy. It's on my episode of Adam Ruins Having a Baby. So check that out and you'll get that information. Anyway, I think that's what's happening here. I think because she's so physical with this dude, she overlooks the fact that they might not be compatible and that happens in a lot of relationships where you get physical early on in a relationship you get addicted to um the physicalness you know what i mean you get you love the kissing and you know the hugging and the touching each other and the moo, 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 all the affection and the sex and all of that stuff you love all that affection but when when that gets old you realize that you're probably not compatible with the person you know what i mean like you you end up you know you're the sex is so great you move the dude into your house the next thing you know you realize he can't keep a job or all he does is play video games all day or he doesn't really bathe as much as he should you know like these things happen and you're just like i don't really like this dude you have different outlooks on life or political differences and things like that and you realize i don't really know this person and i have them in my home or i created this life in this relationship with them and i didn't really realize that because because I'm spending so much of my time being physical with them that I'm not really getting to know them. I'm just, I'm just getting to know that I like how they make me feel physically because I like this sensation. I like this touch. 
It happens all the time, which is why there are so many kids born out of lust. You know what I mean? Like my parents love them to death. They are physically attracted to each other. They love each other as well, but they get on each other's nerves. You know what I mean? The physical attraction was a lot stronger than the fact that they could stay in the same room, you know, uh, with each other because outside of like, they're not having sex. You know what I mean? So when they meet each other, it's it, it, an argument comes up at some point because they both get on each other's nerves. But when I was younger and they were having sex all the time, it was a perfect relationship. But when the physicalness stopped, they realized, oh, you make me sick. Rachel, stop grinding on Brian so you can find a real husband. Ladies, don't allow a man into your vaginal nebula until you've checked his credit score and his family bloodline because you might get sprung with a broke demon. Dean is fine and I will say it every time, that boy look good. And Dean's a little thick too because on this date with Rachel, he has, she told him where like his Sunday's best and I found out later that it's Easter in Geneva at the time of their date. So she told him to put on his Sunday's best and he has on like a really nice outfit, but these pants are like extra medium. And when he turns to the side, you can see his little cake. I was like, okay, Dean, you better be doing them squats. She tells Dean to put on his Sunday's best because she's taking him to church in Geneva. Okay. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense because neither one of them know what's going on in this church. They both look hella confused. It's like, even the people who are at the church are hella confused that they're there. And like, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why this is important. Like this church date is important because Rachel never really talked about church or she never really talked about her religion. So I, 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 I didn't even know she was a Christian. I, I don't know what's going on. Like, why is this date significant? Did we run out of money for dates because you spent all your money on getting Brian a Bentley and a diamond encrusted watch? Is that what's happening here? That's why you got Dean on this cheap church day. Also, did you see that black family in the church? I was like, what the hell are y'all doing in Geneva? We are everywhere. I'm telling you, there ain't a county, a country, a state that can keep us out. We don't die. We multiply. So while Rachel and Dean are on this corny, cheap date, they sit down and she starts to ask him questions about the family because this is what she's trying to get the hometowns in. And uh, Dean is like avoiding the family question because she does the same thing. Can you bring me home to your family? I would never, I would never. Cause first, you know, it's a competition. It's a competition. So I'm gonna say that that's why she has to ask that question. But let me tell you something. If you approach me, I'm not asking you if you can bring me home to your parents. Of course you can. I'm the best thing that ever happened to you, sucker. Anyway, it's not about me, it's about Dean Rachel. Dean is making like all of these excuses and immediately, you know, my African-American heart starts beating fast and I'm just like, oh no, Dean, do you have racist family? <laughs> But it, it turns out that he doesn't have a racist family. He just has a kooky family. And he, especially his dad is like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in his opinion. And he doesn't want her to meet him because he's embarrassed or ashamed for whatever reason. I think, um, I think what he was trying to say, and at least this is what I got from it, was that when his mother passed, his dad, you know, went off the deep end. And that, that could happen. You know what I mean? Like a death is a trauma for a lot of people, especially the people who uh, are close to the person who passed. So it seems like his dad went searching for just understanding or, you know, just some type of peace or something maybe that occupy his time while, you know, he was mourning his wife. And I guess his dad got caught up in some stuff and Dean is ashamed to, you know, show him to Rachel because I guess he said his dad is very eccentric. So I don't, for me, I was just like, I don't know what that means. I, I mean, is your dad a drag queen? Because that would be fabulous, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. So uh, Rachel was really, you know, confused by that. But she still gave our boy the rose because she's into him. Rachel's attracted to Dean. It's very obvious that she's attracted to him. And I mean, who wouldn't be? He's very fine. I don't think they're compatible. But, you know, again, little Rachel is taking over this competition because I feel like Rachel is speaking with the puss. Do you guys watch uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? <laughs> that is my show, Erica Jane. Pat the puss. Hey, pat the puss. Pat the puss. That's what's happening with Rachel. She's speaking with the puss. Rachel, stop speaking. Stop letting the puss lead you. Lead with your mind, not with your puss. Lead with your mind, not with your puss. And shout out to Rachel for being able to walk in Stiletto Hills on cobblestone-like streets. I could never do it, but she is just 
prancing all around these cobblestone cold Geneva streets in these stiletto hills and like not a slip up or nothing. I'm very proud of her. I, I could never do it. Like I'm from Philadelphia, right? We are, gosh, we're colonial to a fault, okay? Philadelphia loves the fact that we are, you know, the first place of liberty, you know? So we don't really like to change a lot of things. So a lot of stuff um, it has to be like preserved, like historically, historically preserved. So we can't touch a lot of things. So there's certain streets that have to remain cobblestone, you know, for history's sake. And listen, don't go on a date in old city ladies, okay? Especially a first date, because you know we all got to wear a heel on a first date. Don't do it in old city because you will snap your ankles on them cobblestone streets. Don't say I ain't warn you. No dates in old city in Philadelphia. No, not even center city. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Tell him to take you, you know, Jersey. Do Jersey. Nah, not old city and not center city. You will snap your ankles trying to be cute. Is it me or was Rachel serving coven realness in her confessionals? Like, especially that um, that confession where she had that black dress, that, that black, like, Elvira Mistress of the Dark dress and that little gothic necklace. I was just like, you better come through, coven. Okay, Rachel, I see you. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Our girl Rachel gives out another one-on-one -on -one date. To who? My baby, Peter. Now, I'm excited about that, but I'm also kind of pissed off because I'm just like, we still don't know who the other two dudes are. You need to give them a date as well. But, you know, she gives Peter another one-on-one -on -one date. And, you know, I'm excited about that because I, I love the time that they have together because I personally think that they have the realist connection on here. I don't think that their connection or his attraction to her is TV. I feel like that with Brian, but I think that he is really attracted to her and he really would want to build something with her. And I think he's taking it at a pace that is normal, you know, not TV show normal. So I think that might be the reason why he won't be uh, the, her pick. So, I, and, and that's really upsetting. You know, what's also upsetting, the fact that she took him on a damn dog sled date. Peter gets a dog sled date and Brian gets a Bentley. Oh, now, sis, your priorities are jacked up. Another thing that bothered me about this date was that it was so freezing. They were both, like, teeth were chattering. You could barely, like, hear the words that they were trying to say because they were both, like, shivering cold. Peter was cold. White Peter. When a white person is cold, it is death level cold for a black person. So I know Rachel was dying inside because Peter was over there shaking. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, we need to get a warm blanket on Rachel because she's going to go into shock at some point. It is freaking freezing. And on this date, we get to learn a little bit about my baby Peter. And one thing that shocked me about him was that he had never dated a black woman before. And I was a, a kind of shocked by that because he just seems like the type. You know what I mean? There are just some white guys who's just like, it seems like they've been here before. So I was shocked that he had, and I think that maybe he he's in the vicinity or maybe he has a diverse community and maybe that's why it wasn't so awkward with him and Rachel. It was clear that Dean had never, you know, uh, even talked to a black woman intimately because he was just so awkward in the beginning. He's comfortable now, but Peter was just smooth and suave and comfortable right off the bat. So I thought that he had, you know, tasted some brown sugar before, but I guess not. And Peter starts talking about his ex-girlfriend that he abandoned and how he was pulling out out his car or whatever out of their parking lot and she was waving to him crying and he starts like crying talking about this woman that he abandoned somewhere in the middle of America and I'm like Peters please shut up this is not working well for you like don't tell a woman that you're interested in that you abandon women and then you start crying about your last relationship so that lets her know that you still have some unresolved emotions there for this other woman Oh, what is going on with this episode? My head is pounding, guys. <laughs> I'm so stressed out. It's sad to say, but I feel like Peter's honesty is going to get him first runner-up. This is why I don't think he's going to win, because Brian is a showman. He'll do whatever needs to happen for the show to give that happy ending. I don't think that Peter is going to play that role because I think he's really into Rachel, Rachel and this is just the pace that he moves at, and I think it's a normal pace for Peter people to move at and um i just don't think he's going to give the show that ending that they want and i think that rachel won't pick him for that uh reason and it's sad because i think that he's the real deal i really really do because brian is saying that he loves rachel and peter is saying i like you and i 
feel like we're on the road to get to that point. But I don't want to lie to you and tell you that I love you when I don't really know you. And Peter is always the one telling Rachel to calm down. Like, not calm down, but like, let's stop the physicalness. Let's spend our time to talk to each other because we have so much ground to cover. And Rachel is the one like trying to like kiss him. And, and I get it. He's attractive. I, girl, I want to do it too. But I, she's just not spending that time getting to know him. That's why I think he's the real deal. I really, oh, oh no, Peter, you're going to be first runner up. Ugh. So Eric, Adam, and the penguin get a one on one date, like a group one on one date with Rachel. And at this point, you know, Rachel has been like so cutthroat in this competition. I honestly think that she probably just might have them all meet her at the airport. And whoever doesn't work out with her, you know, physically, she just might be like, you know what? Here's your plane ticket. Your flight leaves in an hour. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> Not, you know, I'm sorry, Rachel, joking, girl, but you have been, you are quick to cut. No tea, no shade, but whew, you don't play when it's time to get rid of these men. And can I just say that Rachel's baby hairs have been laying this entire episode. Mother got her cream of nature and laid down them edges because the baby hairs have been on what? Fleek. So this is why black women rarely stray from black men because when Rachel sits down for her like mini one-on-one -on -one with Eric, he hugs her, right guys? And I'm telling you, I can feel all the strength of my ancestors in that hug. He hugs her and I think it's a, it's a real deal. I felt that hug. He hugs her, he says that he misses her and he just starts to like build her up and uplift her. He had me swooning and I was just like, oh my goodness, I want a black husband. You know what I mean? Cause he was just so like, I think the thing about it, uh, speaking from a black woman, uh, with why we don't stray and why um, we're always so, um, why we adore black men so much is because it, the relationship is so familiar. You know what I mean? A black man, to, to be quite honest, is he, he's home. Like he feels like home. Like it's, it's just so natural. The conversations are so easy. Like we go through the same thing. So it's, it's just such an easy, relationship in the cultural part you know what I mean and I think that's what anybody of the same culture but it's just like speaking from my perspective it's that moment where he hugged her and she melted I melted I was just like this is why this dude is here he's home he's familiar he's he's everything that we are you know it oh, man I'm still team Peter but I get it I get it I get why Eric is still there damn it and Eric, what producer told you to tell that Baltimore black kid, you know, living in a hood, family locked up sob story? That's not normal. You will not say that on a date with a woman that you're interested in. That comes much later in the relationship. For you to sit there and say that half of your family is locked up and then somebody, one of your close like uncles or whatever, is doing 50 years in prison, you would never say that on a date. This to me is producer prodding and trying to get some type of sob story out of you. Like that is in no way the entirety of Baltimore and that is not the entire black experience. You know what I mean? I just feel like they made like Eric just recite a monologue from The Wire to be like, oh, you know, this is where we're gonna get those sympathy, you know, points in this sad moment in the show. I just, that, that could be his life. And I'm not doubting for one second that that is his life because you know, I could relate to that, but I'm just like, I, it's not realistic to say this to a woman that you're interested in. My uncle is doing 50 years in prison. Okay, check please, like get out of here. Then Rachel has her date with the penguin. And honestly guys, no Tino shade, not lying to you. I nodded off watching this date. Like I woke up on commercial, so I had to like rewind back because their date was so boring. They have no chemistry. Like there was just nothing there. And so Rachel, like halfway through the date was just like, you know what? I'm just going to send you home because there's nothing there. And then like, I did not expect Mr. Matt, the penguin to have such a, you know, strong reaction to being rejected by Rachel because I don't know anything about him and I never saw them together. So it was just odd to me. And maybe it wasn't odd to him or Rachel because they had time together because she was saying all this stuff about how she loves spending time with him and how they're very f sim similar and familiar. And I was just like, how? None of us saw it. But anyway, he was like really broken up about it. And I was like, wow, 
I'm not surprised to see you go. I'm kind of sad now because you really wanted to be there, but none of us knew who you were. You know, maybe it's editing, and I I don't know. I just it's just weird that he had that. It, it's weird that he's top six, and it's also weird that he just had such a strong reaction to being eliminated with a woman by a woman that we never saw him with. And you know what? Pro tip, a uh, penguin. You'd be so much hotter bald. No shade, but I feel like we focus on the center of your head because there's a speck of hair in the front and then nothing in the middle. Then there's all this in the back and you have a head that can do the bald thing and it, you get dark too. So that normally works well, like darker skin works well with a bald head. So just let it go. You got thick eyebrows, you know what I mean? Grow a beard. You know, if you can't grow it up top, grow it down the bottom. It'll look hot. I feel like you would look so much hotter bald. Just my opinion. And I think the opinion of every woman in America. And can I just say, whoever has been doing Rachel's makeup has been doing the damn thing. Her eyeshadow is just gorgeous every time. And her makeup is so natural looking. I love the natural lip that they give her. I love the sparkling eyeshadow. However, I can do without those Claire's 99 cent eyelashes. They look like two post-it notes just flicking and flapping in the wind. It was too strong. Like open them up, do individuals because she looked ridiculous at some point in these dates. So now it's down to Adam and Eric and Rachel takes the both of them out on a date. And uh, guys, you are going to be so mad at me, but I think I'm falling for Eric. This episode, he was so appealing to me. Like I, this is the first episode that I was ever attracted to Eric and I don't know. Now I can see, I can see what Rachel has seen the entire time because he's just so like appealing. He has a way. <gasps> Is it swag? Oh, he has swag too, damn it! It's the swag that is taking me down. Oh, it's working because let me tell y'all something. Somebody shared a picture of Eric uh, with a beard on Twitter. Guys, he is so fine with a beard. I guarantee you if Eric was on this show with a beard, he would be like, he would be where Brian is right now. Brian would not have a chance if Eric came on that damn show with a beard because he looked so fine in that Twitter picture. I was like enlarging it, you know, on my phone. I was, who was that? Like, I could not believe how fine he looked with the beard. And and I think maybe that beard picture is like clouding my judgment because I keep on seeing him with the beard. Oh, he looked good. I'm gonna try to find that, but mm. Yes, Eric. I understand now, Rachel. I'm starting to understand how your mind thinks. I still think you're thinking with the puss, but I'm understanding a little bit better now. I got your back, sis. I got ends back. up getting the hometown roles. I wasn't shocked by it at all because we just had no idea who Adam was. I think the producers didn't care to put like footage of him and Rachel in the show because Rachel was going to pick Eric. So I think that's how it turned out, but I just wasn't surprised by those picks. I was just surprised that she dragged these dudes along this long to like cut them in Geneva. It was just awkward and weird to me but Eric ends up getting the hometown uh date and Adam is really beat up by it and again I'm shocked because I just haven't seen them interact but again they probably had some time on the show that we just didn't see and also did we see the dummy this episode I always miss the dummy I've seen I've watched the episode twice I still have yet to see the dummy if the dummy appeared on this episode please let me know in the comment section below because I miss seeing the dummy so we have our hometown dates Eric Peter Brian and Dean I'm not shocked. Are you shocked? I think all in all, she he, she has a pretty good, you know, top four or whatever. I still have her feel like the first black bachelorette should have had, a, you know, a more enticing group of guys, a needier group of guys to pick from. I just don't think that she had like a good batch of men. Not taking anything away from the men on the show, I just felt like she could have had more of what she's left with now at this point. Like that number could have been tripled and I just feel like it's the, if it's the first bl black bachelorette, you need to go above and beyond to get her some quality dudes because you have a whole new audience that's going to come to this show. So I just, I didn't, I don't know. I just felt like they spent too much time on race and they didn't spend enough time on casting. And you know, this is the top four. No shade to the men on the show, but like Rachel is picking from a dude that needs serious therapy. Another dude who abandoned his last girlfriend and is still like caught up with her emotionally another dude who looks like he's transitioning to Maleficent and another dude who's teething 
These are the men that she has. This is her top four. Of course, they're fine or whatever, but that really doesn't matter when we're trying to match it up to this girl is looking for a husband. Hell, the first bachelorette, she got a hot firefighter and they're still together. So I just, I don't know. I just feel like she could have had um, more of a, a better batch. A better batch. It is what it is. That's how I feel. I just feel like the first black bachelorette deserved better in my opinion. Right, that's where the episode ends. The previews for next week's episode guys did you see dean's daddy i wasn't expecting that i'm telling you i was expecting like a drag queen or like a crazy you know backwater appalachian mountain hunter not this dude i feel like his dad is a freaking genie like what is going on with dean's daddy and then we get to meet like other guys families and i feel like uh rachel's sister gets into it with brian like she sees what we see and what we've been trying to tell her th through the tv screen so next week episode is going to be good i don't know if this is the finale they're making it look like it may be the finale which is weird to me um, that this will be the finale. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. If this is the final episode. The final yeah. episode. I may just go live. So let me know in the comment section below if tonight's episode is the final episode. And I'll figure out some fun ways to get this review up to you, like part live and part filmed and edited. Uh, you know, I'll figure it out. Let me know in the comment section below if this is the finale episode, and I'll do some fun stuff. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Guys, I really need you guys to like and share this episode so that I could be able to make a coin from this so that I can do this uh, more consistently. Right now, my acting is my bread and butter, so that is my main focus. But if I can start getting uh, some a financial blessing from this, I can do this in the time that you all desire. So I need you to like and I need you to share. And honestly, I'm not, I don't want to beg you for it. I want you to like and share if you think it's hilarious, you know, if it's good work, it, if you want other people to see it, do that. I, I don't want you to just share it because I told you to. I want you to share it because you think that it's, you know, you think that you want other people to see it and you think that I did a pretty good job. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning into my channel. I totally appreciate it. I will see you soon for the following episode of The Bachelorette. Love you guys. Bye.